Welcome to DCS SA342 Lima and Mistral Startup Training. I'm Top Gun with the AKA Wardog Squadron. I'll be working today off of checklist version 1.2. And with all of my other checklists, if you see uh, any text in red, that generally means that those are controls that are already in the correct position for a startup if you're getting into a fresh aircraft and starting it up for the first time. However, if you do come back in later to land, rearm, and repair, and you shut down your engine and need to restart, those are steps that you will need to overview and make sure that those are in the correct position. Uh, also, if you see text in blue, uh, that denotes that our, those are steps that will generally be conducted from the co-pilot station, which is on the left seat. Uh, pilot is on the right. This is a multi-crew aircraft, so you can have uh, a another human player riding shotgun with you uh, so you can fly while they do the weapons or vice versa. And if you're in an aircraft by yourself and later on during the course of the mission you know, somebody on the server attempts to access your co-pilot seat, uh, you'll get a little prompt on your screen you know, basically asking for permission for them to join your aircraft. So you need to interact with that and either accept or deny it. Also, if you want, you can the body of the co-pilot can be toggled. You can turn it on or off, although people have kind of commented that you know, his face is a little creepy, probably because he doesn't blink. But So most people that I've seen anyways have had him turned off, although if you go to external view, he'll see that he's there. You just won't see him from internally. So let's go ahead and get started here and close the cockpit doors. These doors apparently are not clickable, so you'll want to keep at this. And uh, the default is right control C using Charlie. Let's go ahead and apply power to the aircraft. So you've got battery, alternator, and generator. And you can turn on panel lighting switched into the up and on position. If it's nighttime, you can rotate this knob right here to turn on UV to make it uh, compatible with night vision goggles. And let's go ahead and turn on the radio. And this is one that's slightly different between the Lima Mistral versus the Michael model. The bezel of the right control here if you hover over the middle, if you mouse wheel, it'll change frequencies. But if you go to the top in the Lima and the Mistral, that's where you can right click to turn on the radio. And you can see that it's on with the little green light. But in the Michael model, I believe you actually have to click over off to the left of this knob. Uh, so the hotspot for turning it on is kind of changed. Uh, I'm at Krasnodar Center, so I need to set this to 122. And let's contact ATC for a startup clearance. So backslash to bring up your comms menu, F5 for ATC, F1 for your airfield, and F3 for startup. Krasnodar, in field, 1-1, one, one. request startup. In field, 1-1, one, one. Krasnodar, clear for startup. So let's go ahead and turn on navigation lights to flash. So this left switch to the up position. Anti-collision, we'll set this to daytime, which is the up position. Nighttime, you'll want the down position. And formation lights, for some reason, is on a different panel. It's way up here over your head, forward to the M position. And you also have a light intensity knob here. Let's go ahead and turn on the fuel pump up to on. And when you do that, you'll also want to hack the stopwatch on your clock, which is this right uh, bottom button and you need to wait at least 20 seconds after you've turned on the fuel pump before you can try and start the engine. Also at this point uh, if you have a sand filter uh, installed on your aircraft this is the point at which you would want to turn it on uh, which is this switch right here and you can tell if you've got a sand filter or not by looking at your external and it's that hump right there, just aft of the 
main rotor and forward of the exhaust, that big bulb there. So if you see that, you've got one installed. And that does take a little bit of power away from the engine for its operation. So if you don't need it, uh, you can contact ground crew through a rearm and repair and refuel window and you can have that you can have them remove it it's just like another piece any other piece of weaponry or equipment once it's been more than 20 seconds since you've turned the fuel pump on uh, you can go ahead and get ready to start with the engine start uh, first however if it is a dusk or evening mission if you want you can also at this point turn on your landing light uh, it actually does retract into the nose, so you'll need to uh, basically extend it, which is the down position, for a second or two. And then the switch here turns it on, so up position. And you'll see it right there. If you don't need it, then obviously don't worry about it, but we'll leave that on for the moment. And then right click on the starter switch into the up position to get the engine going. And you'll be watching your engine instrumentation. And once it's stabilized, we can zoom out a little bit here. And we need to release the rotor brake, which is this huge red handle lever. Push that forward all the way up to the ceiling. And now this is an important step, is starting to increase the fuel flow lever. You want to do this slowly, uh, about two or three inches to start with, and then stop. Basically, you want to go just far forward enough that the rotors will actually start spinning. But the moment they do, stop. Don't go any further. And at this point, you want to keep an eye on this gauge. You're looking at this small needle here. Reason being is that if you open up the fuel flow too far too fast, you'll blow the engine. Uh, if these needles, these two needles here are too disparate. And trust me, I've done it. And you'll know that you've done it because you'll hear a loud explosion. If you've got weapons mounted on the right side of the aircraft, they'll probably be blown off. Your engine will be spooled down and it will never start up again. So you'll need to get a new chopper. So once the small needle has caught up to the big needle, you can go ahead and proceed with the rest of the way forward on the fuel flow lever travel. Just an inch or two at a time and let the engine catch up and then keep going until you hit the ceiling. All right, at this point, we can turn on our pitot heat up to the on position and our trimmer also up to on. Magnetic brake up to on and gyro, which is a rotary, you want this to rotate right once to the 12 o'clock position. And then autopilot system up to on, and then you've got the sub-channels for it, so you've got pitch, roll, and yaw all up to on. Then you've got your radar altimeter, you want to mouse wheel over this to unlock it, and then you can click and hold on this button and then move your mouse up and down to rotate this knob to set the minimum altitude warning. Now at this point you go ahead and right click on the bottom rotary of your nadir to get the navigation system to start warming up and then that'll take approximately two minutes so <coughs> we can continue with the rest of the startup while this is warming up so we'll skip over the rest of the nadir parts for now. So let's go ahead and cage our ADI and just press and hold until this stops moving. Set your nav mode to DOP, which is Doppler. And let's uncage our backup ADI. 
uh, I have to do it with left and right clicking mouse buttons and then mouse wheeling and then scrolling it down until it's evened out. Put your right switch for your radar warning receiver into the middle on position and turn on your flare panel by right clicking once on the switch at the bottom left and make sure you see all of the lights indicating that it's active. So now let's switch over to the co-pilot station, which is default key, and the number, number two key. Let's turn on the sight power, up to on, and then VCB, left click on that once to the end position. And camera position, this is up to you. I right click on it twice to go into travel mode, which means it's not facing forward yet, but it's only one click away. So if you go one more click, that'll turn the camera on. And there's not damage modeled as far as I know in the camera. You're not going to get bug splatters or whatnot if you just leave this forward and you're flying along. So you can probably leave this on and forward, no harm done, if you're flying along like that. Uh, but if you don't want to have a frame rate impact uh, by having a sub, you know, mini window like that, you can turn this back to the travel position, which is the... Looks like the V position on that panel. So let's switch back to the pilot station and let's put our navigation lights into the down steady position. And at this point, the nadir, is, the warning messages are gone, so we can continue with the nadir. Uh, the parameter rotary is already in the UT position, so we'll just leave that there. And the nadir mode, which is the bottom rotary, zoom in on that a little bit. Right click on that once to get to tear, which is basically giving you your present position uh, for waypoint one. All right, now at this point, you're pretty much ready to go to get the clearance from ATC for taxi and takeoff. Um, if you need to, you can adjust the barometric altitude uh, with the lower left-hand knob. Uh, I'll go ahead and finish with the post-takeoff parts of the checklist as well while we're on the ground, just to make things easier. Once you've taken off, uh, you don't need the sand filter anymore. It's just sucking power uselessly, so you can go ahead and turn it off, down position. Uh, if you used your landing light, you can go ahead and right-click on this to retract it and put the switch into the down position to turn the light off. The master arm switch is right here, so you want that to the up and on position. <coughs> if you switch over to the co-pilot, uh, if you want to get blazing information for distance to a target, you'll want to uncover the blazing button, and you'll probably want to have that key map to something to make life, make your life easier. For the weapons panel, you've got the power, this switch right here, you want it to the middle position, and it'll tell you your ammo loadout, so 240 rounds for the gun, 8 rockets in the Lima. In the Mistral, you've got 2 and 2. You've got 2 Mistrals on either side. And I always fly with the guards up so that I can just key map the, these two switches and I can turn them on and off at will. So that controls the left pylon and this switch controls the right. And next is go ahead and flip up this guard, which is for the flare dispense. So that way you can just... Uh, map the flare dispense button. You don't have to worry about the cover. And last but not least, you've got your pilot sight. And I don't fly with this on generally, so I only pull this down when I'm ready to engage something. And notice you don't see any crosshairs here until a weapon pylon is selected, and then you'll get it. Uh, one more thing to note is I'm uh, making this 
video in July 2017. As of right now, there is a sound bug in the Gazelle, all models, both the L, Mistral, and the M, where if you're in a multiplayer mission, I'm not sure if it happens in single player or not, it probably does, but if you're in a mission and you crash or get killed in a Gazelle and you spawn back into another Gazelle, you'll hear ghost sounds, uh, so like fire burning or a warning horn blaring or something like that. That is a bug that they have not yet fixed. Uh, really the only way to fix it is to completely disconnect from the mission and then connect back in, which is a pain. But hopefully they'll get that fixed soon. But uh, for right now, that's what we've got to deal with. Uh, but at this point, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.